The Electricity Company of Ghana is negotiating with the Ghana Revenue Authority to offset about 600 million Ghanaian cities of its tax obligations to the state. Samo Dubik Mahama, the managing director of ECG, who disclosed this in an interview, said the amount would still not be enough since the company was owing GRA over a billion Ghanaian cities in taxes. ECG has so far retrieved about 2.5 billion cities out of 5.7 billion cities in debt that intends to recover from a month-long revenue mobilization exercise. The exercise, which started on March 20, 2023 and ends on April 20, 2023, targets domestic users, businesses, organizations, ministries, departments, and of course, uh, agencies. On its part, the GRA intends to write off the debt of some sensitive public sector institutions that have accumulated over the years. And so this morning from Accra, Ghana, I'm being joined by Emmanuel Amwa Dakwa, who is an economist and partner at advisory firm CCAD Global. It's nice to have you join us, uh, Emmanuel, on the show. Yeah, great to be on your show. It's always a pleasure to be on your show. So um, I'd like to understand your own um, perspective as regards um, the ECG holding talks uh, with the Ghana Revenue Authority um, on the authority writing of about 600 million Ghanaian CDs of its tax obligation. What do you make of that? Yeah, it is obvious that the electricity company of Ghana is going through some financial distress and in the past one month, in a bid to collect debt, debt, as you mentioned in your prayer, but they have been very aggressive in going to public institutions, private institutions, and even homes to disconnect customers who have not been paying them. And so it is obvious that the electricity company of Ghana is going to be through this financial you know, difficulties. Already in the value chain of the energy sector, there is huge debt from supply uh, of fuel to generation and then to distribution. And even at the end of, the, of that, where the electricity company of Ghana distributes to customers. So uh, there is a huge value chain that that ECG needs to help in, uh, in you know, collecting these debts. So uh, apart from the ECG, we are aware that there are other government agencies that are also owing in tax that is meant to be paid to government. So uh, do you think that it's a wise decision for the Revenue Authority to write off debts in these uh, public institutions uh, owing to the fact that the Ghanaian government needs uh, monies um, to be gotten from these taxes to fund its administration, fund the budget, and of course uh, meet up with its expenditure? It's very difficult, and this is a classic case of uh, between a rock and a hard thing. Because as much as, as in as much as the government needs revenue, these state institutions provide very essential services, and so just uh, you know not doing something about their debt can cripple these institutions. And not only the electricity company of Ghana. If you look at the 2023 budget, the total revenue that government and visit to raise is around 143 billion Ghana cities. Of that, tax revenue makes up about 104 billion. So it tells you that it is very good in terms of the volumes of tax and its contribution to uh, total revenue. And so um, it's, it's a very, very difficult situation that the Ghana Revenue Authority finds itself. Uh, in as much as we want to rake in taxes, that these institutions are also providing very essential services to the country. For instance, should the uh, GRE close uh, the offices of ECG, what it means is that there's not going to be distribution of electricity. And if you look at its impact on the economy, that is going to be dire. So it is between a hard uh, plane and then a rock. And I think it's about time that you know state-owned institutions you sit around the table and look at how how best they can resolve some of these issues. Not entirely writing of debt, but also uh, in one breath looking at how much, uh, looking at how this uh, Ghana Revenue Authority can raise revenue for you know uh, for government, and then on the other leg looking at how best these essential companies can also operate smoothly uh, when they are also made to operate, in as much as they have these debts on their books.
But then, uh, Iman, it's quite um, interesting because um, you said that these uh, other institutions um, render essential services to governments and to the public. And uh, these other departments and agencies, in terms of the rendering of this service, are meant to also rake in a certain amount. So I believe they have financial targets, either for the quarter or for the year, in terms of remittances to government. And they're also not paying their taxes. So um, are you justifying the fact that they are not paying their taxes, they are rendering services, they're meant to be money-making agencies and they are also not making as much money for governments. So in both ways, they are not living up to their financial obligations to the government. Is that what you're justifying? <laughs> I am not justifying the uh, inefficiencies of these public institutions and their inability to pay their own the revenue collector. That is the Ghana Revenue Authority. But the elephant in the room now is government of Ghana and so if you go to, if you look at the, what has happened in the past two weeks, the electricity company of Ghana is going around disconnecting public institutions. But the bill lands on the table of government of Ghana. And government of Ghana is not having that fiscal space to, you know, pay the bills of these public institutions. And so it is just a cycle that we have to look at how best we can resolve it. Because a lot of these days, especially with public uh, institutions, it emanates from, you know, government inability to pay for these debt. I have watched the news and even seen in educational institutions that uh, government has promised to pay or government is supposed to pay their electricity bills, but the government is not paid. Hence, the ECD is going to disconnect uh, power from these institutions. And so, the big elephant uh, in the room now is the government of Ghana and how best they can get some fiscal space to offset some of these debts that these public institutions owe the ECG. The ECG also, in, in turn, will also pay the Ghana Grid Company, and then Grid Co. will also pay uh, these suppliers of uh, the generators, i.e. the IPPs and then all the other, uh, you know, uh, generators of uh, electricity. And so it's a whole value chain that we have to look at resolving, but that is not to justify that the electricity company of Ghana should not be made to pay the debt that they, it is owed. Uh, already, you also have to look at why these volumes of debt. And you cannot, uh, you know, rule out the issues of technical and operational losses. And in the electricity company of Ghana, of all the have they issued invoices of 100%, they are only able to get 55%. So what happens to the 45% in terms of debt that is owed customers? And that is where we have to look at how the state can resolve the issue using digital means and also being prompt at, you know, charging customers and letting them pay the right fees at the right time so that they'll be able to also uh, pay the debt that is owed these IPPs, the great company and the other companies that they owe in the value chain. So what does this say about um, Ghana's tax um, system, uh, uh, taxation system, as it were? Because we know that Ghana is going through some financial challenges, uh, fiscal challenges as it were, and of course it's trying to offset debts being paid. And tax payments would have been a very um, good and lucrative way of getting the funds to offset these um, financial issues that Ghana is into. So what does it say about the country's um, taxation system? Do you think it is optimal? Well, it is, if you look at data and available data by a lot of research institutions, including the government of Ghana, it is clear that there are a lot of inefficiencies in our tax collection. And there are tax handles to that have to be implemented and implemented well. For example, we've been talking about property taxes for how many years now? And this is a great tax handle that when government of Ghana is able to implement it and be able to implement it, we'll, we'll be able to rake in a lot of revenue. Uh, if you look at other tax numbers, uh, we, in the past, uh, last two years, government of Ghana tried to introduce the uh, mobile money tax, uh, which has not performed up to expectation. It tells you that Ghana might not even need new tax numbers, but what we need is to be able to enforce compliance with the existing tax handles, so that we'll be able to make a lot of revenue. As I speak to you, um, Ghana's tax to GDP ratio is around 12%. But as a lower middle income country, we should be doing around 18 to 22%. And so uh, I think my solution would be 
from the start looking at how best we can enforce compliance with the existing tax uh, you know regime and also ghana is largely an informal sector in an informal sector how do you raking taxes from the informal sector which contributes uh, in excess of 80 percent to ghana's economy government has done well in trying to identify individuals through the national identification authority and also through the digital addressing system to identify houses and properties the next thing is how do you use this data to be able to be a lot of people who are not in the tax bracket uh, for example if someone sells coconut on the street the person who might not be contributing in terms of income tax to uh, the state but how do you use the data that is available through the national identification authority to be able to reach in a lot of revenue and i think this should be the focus of ghana going into the medium term so that we'll be able to rake in a lot of revenue from the informal sector to be able to you know broaden the tax base of this country all right, let's go back um, to the ECG now. Uh, we are aware that there are some customers who actually fake meters, as it were. That's been a bit of a challenge uh, for the electricity generation company, as it were. Now, um, in, in spite of that, um, ECG has actually told customers that they should pay in anticipation for the bill that would come. And um, some people are actually wondering, why is it that um, the electricity company is focusing on anticipatory payments by customers when it should be focusing on dealing with other bottlenecks and challenges as regards metering and fake meters and those who are actually circumventing the use of um, these apparatus? The, the solution would be for the ACD to invest a lot in prepaid metering. For prepaid meters, you buy the power before you use it. But if you look at the current structure, we still have a lot of uh, postpaid meters in the system, in the private institutions, in the homes, and even in public institutions. So for ECG to you know, improve upon efficiency in collection of their revenue, I think ECG should be able to invest a lot in prepaid metering so that customers, before you even consume the power, you pay for the power. And that is the surest way of ECG, you know, breaking a lot of revenue and averting the problems that we currently have on our hands. So how do you expect a customer to make payments in anticipation of the bills that will be, you know, sent to them? I think it is not right. And this is largely due to the inefficiencies in the system. So the surest solution for me will be for ECG to invest a lot in prepaid nutrients so that they'll be able to make in a lot of revenue going forward. All right, before I let you go, uh, Emmanuel, is um, ECG looking at alternative and or cheaper um, energy generation and distribution uh, conduits, as it were, to reduce its cost of operation? Even at the government level, so government is looking forward to cheaper sources of energy. But as I speak to you, my look at the energy mix of Ghana presently, uh, thermal produces about 66%, hydro about 62%, and then renewable energy about two percent and that is where we are now and so when we are having a, a lot of problems in terms of ipps and the debt we owe them this is due to our generation mix and so going forward even at the government level government is looking forward to uh, you know having cheaper sources of generation of energy so that that will reduce the you know generation costs so that the distribution and the transmission to you know, customers can also go down and we'll be able to reduce the volumes of debt we have in the value chain of the energy sector. And so going forward, it is a broad government, you know, policy that in the medium term, government even wants to increase renewable energy uh, generation from the current 2% to about 10% in the medium term. So these are all options that government is considering to be able to reduce the cost of generation of energy in Ghana. Now, does that also mean that um, the government is planning, or the ECG rather, is planning on um, tapping into the carbon credits, uh, either by reducing emission as it were, or using other renewable sources? D does that apply? Yes, um, all countries all over the world, uh, these are policy options that governments and institutions as such are considering. And so it's still in the right place for ECG to be exploring such policy options to reduce the cost of energy for the consumers and also reduce the volumes of debt it goes in the value chain. So I think it's a step in the right direction.
Uh, so finally now, how do you think um, the GRA, that's the Revenue Authority, should go about uh, recouping in terms of um, tax collection um, from these agencies, not only agencies, other corporates, private um, individual, uh, individuals, and of course corporate organizations. How do you feel that it can go about um, collecting its tax to generate as much revenue? Because I know that there is a target, and meeting that target is as important as getting those taxes for government. So how do you think it can go about um, getting those monies from these individuals and corporate organizations? I think it's very important for them to go and then get these monies from these institutions and also from individuals. Then I uh, must commend the ACB in the past for what they have been able to do. For the past two weeks or three weeks, they've been able to go around to get them. Even though they've not met the target, but I think it's a step in the right direction to be aggressive on revenue collection. Because what business case does it make? When you issue uh, of the invoices you issue, you only get 55% of it. What happens to the 45%? And more importantly, ECB should be able to work on reducing technical and operational losses. At the last time I checked, operational and technical losses accounts about 18 to 20 percent. And uh, you know, as a distribution company, they should be able to do what to reduce it even into the single digit in the medium term. For the GRA, the GRA should also be very aggressive on tax collection, but also be able to ensure a lot of tax compliance. And let me make the point again. Ghana does not need new tax handles, but what we need is to be able to ensure compliance of the existing tax handles so that we'll be able to grow revenue, tax to revenue from 12% to 18 to 20% in the medium term for, for Ghana to improve upon its fiscals. All right, thank you so much, Emmanuel, for joining us. Thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure.